us on this fourth Sunday of Easter. I'm Pastor Jeff Silverdale from Gilead Lutheran Church here in Center Brunswick. We're coming to you from our beautiful sanctuary. And serving with me today is G Deacon Jim Netzer. And uh, we have a reader this morning, and that is Leonard Flapp. By way of announcements, just first of all, thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of this online worshiping community. As always, this video will remain available on Facebook, and also we will place it on our YouTube channel probably this afternoon. All of us look forward to the time when we're going to be able to gather together once again and worship in person. But in the meantime, I want you to know your church is active, and your church leaders are active, and uh, if you have any special concerns, especially any pastoral care concerns, please let us know. And as always, keep praying. Our worship schedule for this coming week, uh, once again on Wednesday evening, I will be doing an online devotion at 7 o'clock. It's about 10 minutes long, and it's just a, it's a chance for me to share a few reflections on a piece of scripture. Uh, also, uh, we'll be back here next Sunday at 10.30, next Sunday morning. And uh, tomorrow morning, I am offering from 9 in the morning till 10 in the morning, a time which I call Coffee with Pastor Jeff. It's just a very informal time. We can check in with each other. I'll, I'll be in my office at home working, and I'll have a, a Zoom on, and if you come on, we'll chat for a while. So if you, if you would like to see the link for that, just go to our Facebook page and I will post a link so you can join me tomorrow for coffee. And also please remember your church by making your offering, whether by mail or it's also a great time to try the online giving button on our website. We take a moment to center ourselves and prepare for worship. If you have a Lutheran book of worship in LBW, I invite you to open to page 77 in the front of that hymnal. We join together in our brief order of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we are bound to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a call to ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And wherever you are this morning, or if you're watching later, we wish the peace of the Lord be with you. And also with so you.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, O God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First lesson today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2. Today's reading is a description of life in the community following Peter's sermon on the day of Pentecost when the Spirit was poured out on God's people. The new community is sustained in worship and fellowship, shares what they have, and ensures that everyone has enough. It is written. The baptized devote themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Here ends the lesson. The psalm is Psalm 23, found on page 225 in the LBW, and we will recite it. Verse by verse, I will do the first and third, and everyone else in between the second, fourth, etc. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though, Though I, I walk, walk through the valley, valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely the goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. does not guarantee that one will not experience difficulties, hardships, rejection, or even suffering. Here, Christ is presented in the, as the model for our path of endurance and loyalty to God, particularly amid adversity. The reading is from 1 Peter 2. It is a credit to you if being aware of God, you endure the pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten. But he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were growing astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Here ends the lesson.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The sheep, the sheep thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. This fourth Sunday of Easter has been traditionally known, at least among preachers, as Good Shepherd Sunday. Depending on the three-year cycle of readings, we get to hear about Jesus one way or another, about Jesus being a shepherd. This year in our Gospel reading, Jesus talks about how the sheep hear the voice of the shepherd and follow. And then Jesus says that he is the gate to the sheep. He is the one who lets the sheep in for safety. And he's the one who lets them out to go to good pasture. And Jesus says that he does this, that they may have life and have it abundantly. Now in the other two years of our reading cycle, we hear other parts of this very same passage in which Jesus says that he is the good shepherd and once again reiterates that the sheep hear his voice. How do we hear our shepherd's voice? You know, I think there are probably any number of ways that we hear that voice. Some of them are individual, they're specific to us. Others are more communal. I think we certainly hear the voice of the Good Shepherd when we are caught up in worship. We hear our shepherd in acts of compassion and love, whether in giving or receiving. We hear the Good Shepherd, our Savior, in music that stirs our souls. We hear the voice of Jesus in fellowship of the community of the faithful through our brothers and our sisters. And we hear the words of the Good Shepherd through the precious words of Scripture. You know, I have some favorite verses and favorite passages. You probably do as well. And if we think about what people really like and what speaks to them, I think we could probably take certain passages of the Bible that aren't particularly popular, like the begets in Matthew. Not too many people would say that's their favorite, or the counting of the tribes of Israel in the book of Numbers. Probably not in the top ten. But I bet we could point to some really well-known passages and verses that people just love. There are parables, like the parable of the prodigal son or the parable of the good Samaritan, that speak to generation after generation of believers. There's a story of the Annunciation when the angel Gabriel came to Mary and she said yes. There is a story of the Nativity Jesus, our newborn Savior, lying in a manger. And then there's the adoration of the Magi as they came to bring their worship and their gifts to the newborn King. 
We have the various accounts of the resurrection and the joy that they bring, but also we have the powerful words from the cross, words like, Father, forgive them. And today you will be with me in paradise. There are verses that promise, promise to lift us up on eagle's wings, and there are verses that promise us God's goodness always. Well, here's another one. Here's another piece of scripture that cuts across all barriers of language and culture and generation and socioeconomic status and speaks the voice of the Good Shepherd into our hearts, and that is the 23rd Psalm. A number of years ago when I was in Honduras, I noticed it was a popular inscription to have across the top of your windshield. The inscription was... El Señor es mi pastor. In English, the Lord is my shepherd. Now the funny thing is, I never saw a sheep and I never saw a shepherd in Honduras. And come to think of it, you don't see an awful lot of sheep here in upstate New York. How is it that people all across the world, most of whom have very little contact with either sheep or shepherds, so resonate? these words. I think it's because in these familiar words of Scripture, we clearly hear the voice of our Lord Jesus, our Good Shepherd, speaking to us. And so I, what I want to do this morning is take a devotional look at the 23rd Psalm to maybe see how we might be hearing the Shepherd's voice for us today. Now I've had some time to think about the 23rd Psalm, in this regard, as it's one of my go-to devotions that I do while sitting up in a tree stand for hours on end in what I like to call my annual prayer retreat, something that other people call deer hunting. So if you indulge me, what I want to do is I want to do this in the old language, because this is how I memorize the 23rd Psalm. So I'm going to use the King James Version, because when I think about it, that's the way it pops into my head. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not. Now, since I mentioned Honduras already, let me go back there for a minute. I've been two times. The first time I went was shortly after Hurricane Mitch. Now, Hurricane Mitch was a Category 5 storm, and the severity of the damage was extensive and was catastrophic. Now, Honduras is a very poor country, even in the best of times, and then they're dealing with all this. So I was part of a mission team that was going to an orphanage that my congregation supported. We were just going to see how we might help. What shocked me more than the storm damage was the joy of the people. The attitude of the people was not, woe is us. Rather, the attitude was typically, we are so blessed by God. Every little thing that we brought, every little thing that we did elicited exuberant thanksgiving and lots of exclamations of gracias a Dios. Thanks be to God. Coming back home, what a contrast there was. And it really caused me to think about a lot of things. Like, for one, how we usually just take so many things for granted, so many blessings, they're just part of the background. We, we don't even notice them. But the other thing was this. Why do we want so much? Why are we chasing the next thing to make ourselves happy? Is it necessary? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures and leadeth me beside the still waters. If we are sheep, what is it that we need? Well, we need food and water, safety. We need each other. The basic things of life. So much of the rest of the stuff that we chase after just gets in the way of our appreciation of what God does provide. And so often our possessions 
Well, they end up possessing us. He restored my soul. You are a precious child, God. You are of infinite worth. How do I know? I know because Jesus gave everything for you, even his life. You were created to be the person that God wanted to create. You are loved. You are forgiven. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. You are so precious. You are so loved that God does not leave you unimproved. Our Savior leads us to learn how to treat one another with God-given love and respect. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. We live in a dangerous world. No one in this world is exempt from sickness, tragedy, heartbreak, or physical death. But we are not alone. We are never alone. The shepherd who brought us this far will not abandon us now and will not abandon us ever. The knowledge of the presence of the Savior gives me the strength to claim another one of my favorite verses, and that's Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through, through him, that is, through Christ, who strengthens me. With Jesus, we can navigate even the worst that this world throws at us, knowing that we are secure in him and he is with us. My rod and my staff, they comfort me. That shepherd's crook, that staff, it's a tool of guidance and it's a tool of rescue. When we get ourselves into the dangerous predicaments of life, the shepherd can reach out snatch us back to safety. And then we come to a change in imagery in this psalm. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Now sheep aren't invited to dine at table, but we are. And I find that reference to enemies a, a little baffling. You know, I don't know what to make of it. it. Does it mean they have to watch us feast? That might be sweet revenge, but I think more likely what it means is that at God's table, there are no enemies. We are together. We are one family, feasting at the eternal celebration of the Lord. Thou anointest my head with oil. Anointing is a biblical sign of being chosen. It's a reminder that you are one of God's chosen. My cup runneth over. This is the abundant life that Jesus came to give us. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, even in the midst of economic uncertainty, even under threat of pandemic. Why? Because the Lord who went to the cross and the grave, rather than lose any of his flock, has opened heaven for us through his resurrection. He is the gate, the gate to life. And because of him, and because of his gift, I will, we will, dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. So I forgot to announce the last hymn, so, um, but I will announce this one. We're going to sing, Have No Fear, Little Flock. If you have a Lutheran book of worship, it is number 476.
And now let us profess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. You can find it in the Lutheran Book of Worship on page 85. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of our Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. I will end each petition with, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with, hear our prayer. Shepherding God, we thank you for the educational ministries of your church, enriched the work of teachers, professors, mentors, advisors, and faculties at colleges, seminaries, and learning sites and now especially through online learning platforms. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Creating God, we praise you for those who maintain and operate farm equipment, for those who plant and harvest crops, for local farmers markets and for grocery stores, for those who transport food, for those working in the markets, and for those involved in agriculture of any kind. Strengthen their hands as they feed the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Guiding God, no one should be in want. Bid the nations to return to your paths of righteousness and inspire our leaders to walk in your ways so that all may have the opportunity to live abundantly and sustainably. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comforting God, you carry us tenderly. We pray for those who walk through dark valleys overshadowed by anxiety and overwhelmed with suffering. In this time of pandemic, we lift up to you all who suffer, all who mourn, all who worry, all who struggle. And we pray for healing for all those on our prayer lists, as well as those in our hearts this morning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, you desire justice for the hungry. Bless advocacy work, food pantries, and feeding ministries in all of our congregations including our own food pantry here at Gilead and our monthly body and soul dinners. May none of our neighbors lack the basic needs. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We ask wisdom for all leaders. We pray for strength and stamina for all those who work to bring health and healing, and for those who continue to provide the things necessary for life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Here other intentions may be offered from the silence of our hearts at this moment. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Everlasting God, your beloved have heard your voice. You have called them by name and guided them to your side in death. We thank you for their lives of faithful witness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And with bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. And gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And may the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Christ is risen just as he said, 
Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia.